Hi there, Cam Hawkins here from 52 Traders, and today I'm going to walk you through a little system that I've put together based on Norman Hallett and Serge Berger's advice in the show. So for those of you that haven't listened to the shows yet, you'll uh, if you go back or, or if you have a look at the uh, blog post I've written on this, uh, this these guys have walked us through how they would approach trading the S&P 500. And there were some things in common that they had. One was they had uh, the same sort of candlestick formations that they'd look for. And the other was the fact that they'd both use some sort of channel or um, channel lines to to uh, trade with them. And you can see here in front of you, you have a chart, which is the S&P 500 five-minute chart. And what you can see there are the Bollinger Bands and then the price action. So what I'm going to do is look at the specific price action points that, that both Norman and Serge recommended and uh, we'll walk you through this chart so you can see how their system uh, per se would play out. Now to start things off I've given the system some rules so every good system needs some rules so if we have a look uh, in actual fact where shall I put this let's just move this chart along here a little bit <clears throat> And here we go. So if we have a look here, uh, I've got some rules for the system. So if you have a look on the chart here, you'll see a little arrow. So that arrow uh, signifies a hammer candle, which was one of the candlestick patterns that uh, they recommended. So if I click on the chart, you can see there it should show up and say hammer. There we go, hammer one. So this is part of a, a bit of software that I wrote to uh, generate on the chart these price formation so we want to we're looking for hammers we're looking for shooting stars which are essentially the opposite of a hammer and we're also also looking for bullish and bearish engulfing patterns so having a look at the uh, rules I've got here so I've got some entry rules exit rules and a rule for a stop loss so the entry rules you can see there five of them the first one is set a pending order three pips offset from the high or low at the close of the signal candle so as I said before the signal candle can be a hammer shooting star bullish or bearish engulfing pattern so if you look at this one here you can see there that uh, this signifies a hammer candle so you've got a small body at the top and you've got a big long wick and I've got some settings in the uh, EA that I devised to uh, show that little try a little arrow alert at the top there that pick out what a uh, how, how I define a hammer candle in this instance so three pips offset from that would be uh, about in where that arrow is uh, so that's the first rule so you're going to set uh, here a pending order three set offset three pips offset sorry and that would be a buy pending order around about there so the next rule is delete pending order if after sorry after two candles so you can see there so if we just go back to here so you've got three pips above this so one two three so it's really at the top of that candle there and you'd put your pending order order about here so will this pending order trigger based on the rules no it won't so candle one it's below candle two is below so we would delete that penny order at this point here um, even candle three wouldn't trigger it really it would get triggered triggered on candid, candle four so that was the second rule third rule is Bollinger Bands must be widening not closing or narrow so in this instance you can see here that they are widening uh, both top and bottom although it's really the one that is closest to that we're interested in and they're definitely not narrow so that would be a good sign uh, price cannot close too close to the middle of the Bollinger Band so you see here if we look at the distance between the top and the bottom so you got 40 48 so this is sort of halfway between and what we're really looking at is there enough room here to make some money so you can see there 22 which is fine so we'd take that and rule number uh, five price must pierce the Bollinger Bands so in this instance you can see here the price doesn't pierce the Bollinger Bands that said it is uh, the very first day of the year so in the very one of the very first candles if not the first candle uh, for January so there's a massive gap here 
and uh, we wouldn't trade this anyway. But you can see here the price does not pierce the Bollinger Bands. That said, it may have uh, pierced it at some point during the candle or even after the candle purely based on the fact that some this Bollinger Band will repaint itself. So it will move um, up and down and then finally fix itself to a position when the price moves on. So I can demonstrate that a bit later on. So those are our entry rules. Now our exit rules. Uh, so this is how we're going to get out of the trade. So assuming, so this trade here would not trigger. Uh, but assuming it did trigger, we would be entering, uh, so that the exit rules would be exiting, sorry, exiting 50% at the Bollinger Band midpoint and then would move our stop loss to the entry and the second one is would exit 50% at the Bollinger Band upper or lower point and uh, and that would be the end of the trade so if we have a look here what does that mean so we're entering about here so we set two trades one of them we would exit here for 19 pips and the other in this instance because it doesn't reach the other side of the Bollinger Band, it would come all the way back, and at that point we've moved the stop loss to break even, so we would exit here for no return. If it did move on, we'd exit wherever it crossed that Bollinger Band at the top. So that would give us, if it had gone straight up, it would give us 53. If it had gone up even steeper, it would have given us 74. So those are the rules of the system. The last one is a stop loss. We're going to set the stop loss at 3 pips offset, uh, below or above the signal candle. So in this case we've got a hammer candle and what you'd be doing, look, where you'd be looking to set your stop loss is, so if that's the low there, about here. So just giving yourself a little bit of breathing space. And look, if you want to be more conservative you could set it lower but then you really need to possibly even look at the distance you've got here to travel. Um, is it a one to one risk reward ratio? Uh, or two to one, then maybe you can set the stop loss a little bit lower. So let's just delete that. Right, so now we've got our rules. What I'm going to do is step through this chart, and we're going to go through January 2014 and see how the system that Norman and Serge helped create would, uh, would fare during the month of January, and we might even go in and have a look at February and see how that performs as well. So I'm just going to scroll along here, and as you can see, I've, I've already run this data and I've put my EA across it to let us know when these um, candle patterns occur. So you can see here that's an, it's another one there and we've got, it'll tell us what it is. So it's a bullish engulfing pattern so you can see there, um, although it does pierce the bottom, the bands are definitely coming together and it's way above the half so it's not one we'd consider entering. So if we go along a bit further Okay, what have we got here? So we've got a hammer candle, and we can see there that depending on your appetite for risk, you might want to trade this. It is going to yield really three pips, two pips. So if you entered it, you're going to yield two pips to get to the mid midway point um, at a risk of 16 pips so it's definitely not a one one to one risk reward ratio um, but had you entered it you'd walk away with a, a further 21 pips so let's note that down first trade two pips and one a would yield us what did I say was it 21 was it Let's go from the top of that. Remember, we're going to take off three, so that's 19. Okay, so that's our first trade. Now, what have we got here? That didn't cross the line. It's going along. So the ones in the middle you can pretty much ignore straight away. So we're just looking for these little arrows here. So you can see this one closed too close to the middle line of the Bollinger so we're not going to go with that that's a, a bullish engulfing here we go um, what have we got here so we've got another bullish engulfing pattern here uh, the bands are expanding down the bottom here it's come outside of the bands there is still some room once again it's not a lot but we are on the five minute chart remember so you're looking at three pips so really 
by the time you set your offset, nah, it's not gonna not gonna be worth it. So we're gonna leave that one and move on. Here we go. We've got a uh, shooting star at the top there. So what we're gonna do is, and this has got plenty of so the bands are widening. It's pierced the bands. Uh, it's got plenty of room to go to the uh, middle line of the Bollinger band. So let's take our uh, and that would be triggered within two candlesticks easily. So we're going to take that. We would walk away with the first percentage of 17. So let's mark that down. And then we move our stop loss to break even. And that's where it would end. So we get 17 there and a break even. So a second trade. 17. And break even. Okay, let's keep going along. You see, there didn't quite pierce the Bollinger Band. Now we've got one here which pierced, everything's lining up, so we'd set our pending order here. But as you can see, after two candles, it didn't trigger and the price dropped away. So we wouldn't be caught in that trade, which would have obviously gone against us. Um, same with this one here. So two candles, we would have missed out. Um, these were both didn't come down far enough to trigger the order. And this one here would be in. So you've got your three pips. Would trigger on the second candle and would be looking to walk away here let's say 10 and we'll move our stop loss to zero and so our second trade would yield us let's say 43 44 and it's five minutes so that might have happened fairly quickly so you might have ended up with more but let's put 44 and so it's 10 and 44 3B44. Okay, let's keep moving along. So we're on the 10th of January now. We've made three trades. Remembering this time of year is a little bit light. You can see there that that one didn't pierce, that this one didn't pierce either. Moving along, where are we here? None of these pierced. So these patterns do occur, but often not at the uh, at the points that you want them. So there's another one there, it's midway of the band, and you see there. There's actually a, a little little hammer candle here. It's, it's too short for my system to pick it up, but that's dropped out of the Bollinger's. So everything else lines up, and I mean you could have made a good little profit there if you're just looking at that manually. So what else have we got here? So, I mean, you can, they've got little arrows here. So this is a, a shooting star, which, you know, you could have traded if you were trading off the middle, but that's not, a, that's not our system. So we keep looking another hammer here that you could have taken. Um, you've got a tweezer here. You could have taken that up. Um, this one would have yielded a nice little uh, profit for you as well. So although the um, system I've put in, on here in the, in the uh, the robot that goes through and picks these trades. So I mean, you've got another, another hammer there that you could have traded. It's fairly conservative, so it's not going to pick up every single uh, instance of a hammer. And if it would, you would find that you'd be losing more often than uh, than not. So you can see there another tweezer pattern. So they both, both of them hitting the same uh, level there, and up it went. Okay, there should be another one. So you can see here, this one would have been a signal. So the hammer, so you would have entered a pending order here, but it wouldn't have been triggered. So you'd stay out. You can see there another hammer candle here uh, that could have taken you up there if, if uh, you were so inclined.
moving along here. There's nothing obvious sticking out. Right, so the next one is 27th of Jan. So you can see here there's a couple of opportunities. So there's a little hammer candle here of which the penny order wouldn't have triggered. And then you've got this one down here where the penny order would definitely trigger. So let's map this one out. So you can see there's plenty of room to get to the midway point of the Bollinger Band. So if we were looking at this, so you would have exited at 31 initially and then moved your stop loss to zero, it would have carried up to give you 76. Okay, and you would have got that second uh, bullish engulfing pattern here that would have given you further confidence that the price was going to go up. So let's have a look where else we're we going to find some more of these. So the arrows that I've put on here are telling you which direction you should trade in. So here's another one. So you can see that's going down. It's, it's not at the top, but this one here is another nice one. You've got a shooting star at the top there. If we take our three pips off, you've got nine, and then it's going to take you down to 30. So nine and 30. Okay, let's getting towards the end of uh, the month here. So you can see here we've got another bullish engulfing. This one, you haven't really got the space, and plus the bands are coming in, so you wouldn't take that. Here we go. This one here, you've got a hammer, which hasn't pierced. Here you've got a hammer which has pierced, but this hammer's too small for my system to pick up. So we might do that one. You've got three tweezers here, which should give you that trade there if you're after it. So coming to the end of the month, so now you've got this hammer here, which is ticking all the boxes. So we've got the bands widening, we've got hammer candle, we've got uh, plenty of room to the midway point of the Bollinger Band. So let's mark this one up. Your stop loss is here. It's obviously not going to get hit with that one. And we're going to get 16, so 15, 16 minus 3, 13, and 40, 13 and 40. Okay, so... Th Good news is in January you haven't lost any money yet. And we're almost at the very end of January. I don't... There we go, into February. And so let's have a look at how we fared in January. Um, let's just do a quick total. So if we have a look at the number of trades we took. So we took 12. Well, six really. Six trades um, with a total of 12 trades there. Let's put 12. And we had 11 winners and one break even. One break even and zero losers. So, all in all, a good month. And that was a total of, let's get the calculator out. So, 291 pips or points. And uh, what you do need to bear in mind is that the B trades here are only 50% and the A trades are only 50%. So uh, you're not getting that full whack. So if you do suffer a, stop, uh, suffer a loss, you're getting 100% of the loss, but you're only getting 50% uh, of the win. So say we lost, say, we, say the stop loss was set at 20 for this uh, 6B trade here, and we took 40 pips. At 50%, it's essentially a one-to-one -one risk or reward ratio. So just bear that in mind with this system that I've put together here. If you want to stick around, I'm going to walk through February and see how that performs. If you just want to skip to the end and see how it did perform and see the results, then fast forward to the end of the video. But for those sticking around, let's have a look at February now. 
So I'm just going to save that. Right, so this is into February, so short a month. And straight away we've got a shooting star that we can trade. So let's have a look at that one. And that all meets our criteria. So three pips. Ooh, hang on a sec. No, nah, it wouldn't trigger. It doesn't trigger. So let's keep going. Now this one here does trigger, so this is a bearish and go bullish engulfing. So everything's meeting there, so we're going to enter at the close, plus three. We would, that's very close to our, oh, just the bottom of the candle, so we would get 11, 10, so it's really seven pips, and would break even. So let's put that in for Feb. Next cab off the rank is that one doesn't pierce, so we keep moving along. Nothing there. Okay, here we go. We've got a shooting star up the top. So what we're going to do is... and uh, So here you might wonder as to whether or not is that coming in. Do you want to trade that? I mean, there has been a, been a big uptrend. Um, you may not trade this one, but for the sake of this video, we're going to trade it because uh, it does look healthy. So we would go in there and we'd take 11 and then stop loss to zero, doesn't get hit, and we'd be exiting at 29 there. So 11 and oh, not 29, minus 6, minus 3. to a 11 to B 26 taking off the three pips buffer that we've got after the close of the uh, the shooting star candle so let's keep moving along Here we go. So we've got a bullish engulfing here. Now, you could say, do we trade this? Is there enough risk or reward here? I mean, you're really looking at a reward of 9 versus a risk of 25 plus 3, 28. It's risky. For the purpose of the demo, let's just say we'll trade it. So you take the trade. All you're going to get is... Well, you're going to get your 9 on this next candle. And, oh, sorry, 10 minus 3, so 6. And then you're going to get blocked out of it on the next candle because you're going to move your stop loss. So you're going to get 6. So that's being aggressive, and see, it didn't pay off. So what did I say? 6. Zero. So you're better off being conservative. Let's keep going along, see what we can find. Oh, oh no, not quite. Almost looked like a big hammer there. It's a massive bearish engulfing pattern there. But obviously not one that we're going to pick up. Okay, so can we see anything else? Here we go. There's a, I mean, it's horizontal, so these aren't really, the bands aren't really expanding. And anyway, you're not going to get uh, picked up here because the price doesn't come back. Okay, what have we got here? So this one looks okay. It does look okay. So you'd pick this one up because you've got a hammer candle here. Three pips. Gets picked up on the next candle. Unfortunately, it doesn't make the midway point. So in actual fact, you're going to lose 17 plus 3. 
So you're going to lose oh, plus 3 plus another 3. So you're going to lose uh, 23. So it's, you're down 23 pips. Minus 23. And that's that trade done. Remember, you don't lose, you don't win all of them. And for those of you that uh, are not trading on the system, you might have wanted to exit early for whatever reason. Uh, there might have been some other analysis analysis that you'd done. So here's another one that we would have picked up. So we're looking at three pips offset here, picked up on the second candle. And although it would have taken us to very close to our stop loss, it wouldn't have triggered. And we would have uh, picked up, what's that, 6, 5 minus 2 is, uh, sorry, 5 minus 3 is 2, plus 12. 2 plus 12. So let's log that in. Not quite enough to claw back our 23 that we've just lost, but still, it was a good trade nevertheless. So you can see the, that these do appear quite often, but not as often as you'd possibly like. So here's one um, that wouldn't get triggered because we didn't have uh, a candle below after two candles. So it wouldn't have got triggered. Here's another one that would have got triggered. So you would have entered here, plus three, and you would have got triggered on the second candle, and unfortunately you would have lost 20. So that's 20, so we, 21 plus six is 25, uh, 27. So you lost 27. What did you have to gain here? You had really 13 to gain. So there's a lesson there whether or not, in addition to this, so 6a, you would have lost 27. So the lesson there, I think, I think the lesson is looking at the difference between, and you know, I didn't spend a lot of time trying to come up with the system, but looking at your risk reward ratio before you enter the trade. So if you're looking at the Bollinger Band up here, is that uh, is that far enough for you to, or even up here when you took the trade, is that far enough for you to make up double the stop loss? And even the, the first portion of the trade, is that far enough for you to um, warrant entering the trade? Uh, I mean, do you want to have a risk to reward ratio of 2 to 1 instead? Sorry, 1 to 2. Okay, let's move on. So we're in the 19th of Feb, it's not going as well as January. Uh, but not every month is a winning month. So here's one that you might have traded again. So you've got a bearish engulfing. If we, once again, your risk reward ratio, you know, if you're going to be aggressive, you might have taken it. So we've got here 20, so that's uh, 17. And may have, may have crossed on a repaint. Um, so let's say 17, and you'd be out in the break even. So 17 is it. And break even. Right, let's keep going. Here's another one that you may or may not have taken. Probably not because it's coming in. It's a bit of a dece deceptive one, this, because it's going out there, but it's, well, I suppose it is going out, so you might, you probably would have taken it if you were looking at this purely in an aggressive manner. So you've got three, so you're really going to make two, and at risk you've got another 17, plus another 20, 23 at risk. So you're going to make two and 23, and then you're going to make 
23 again. So let's say 2 and 23 you would have made. Okay, let's keep moving on. 21st of Feb, so we're getting towards the end of the month. Now what have we got here? It's a perfect bullish and golf bearish and golf uh bearish and golfing, but wouldn't get triggered. Or may get triggered. Three. Yes, that would get triggered. Just another loss. Talking three, so thirty pips. Minus thirty. So it's not always gonna work for you this system, but not every month is a winner. Sometimes you can see that there are really good good setups like this one here. So if we're gonna enter at the close here, plus three. We're going to get ourselves 14, and then oh, 40, 14 and 40. Once again, let's have a look at the... Uh, so you're risking yourself here 23 and you're gaining 17 well plus 3 so yeah so minus 3 so 14 so it's not too bad not too bad it's livable okay come on if you're stuck with me this long you're doing well half an hour of this you are doing very well uh let's keep going here we go so we've got another in, uh, another shooting star here, and there was a uh, yeah two shooting stars actually in a row. So a good sign the price is going to go down. So we would come in here and we would miss the midline midway point of the Bollinger Band there, come all the way back, but not far enough for us to lose out, and we'd probably exit on eleven. Minus three is eight, and then again, strictly st sticking to our system. Oh no, sorry, strictly st sticking to our system would be blocked out here at zero. So you'd get eight out of that one. Okay, twenty sixth of Feb. So we must be coming very close to the end of the month. Twenty seventh. So here we got a uh, another shooting star. So where would that one end us up at? So you're definitely going to come in. It's looking good. It's not very big in comparison to the other candles around it. Um, so whether or not that's had enough momentum, but twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So twelve. So you would lose in this one. Plus six is eighteen. So you'd be out of pocket 18. Right, ready ho. Okay, here we go. We've got a another good setup here. So this is a bullish engulfing. Uh, midway point would be seven. And then we're looking at a total profit, uh, another profit point of um, 20. 7 and 20. Sorry, not 20. So you would say 17. 7 and 17.
and we're almost into March. There we go, first of March. Massive gap. All right, well, look, thank you for sticking with me on this for 36 minutes. I'm recording here, so it might be a little bit shorter when I take out some of the edits. Uh, let's see where, where we ended up. It's going to be quite difficult to work out. So we had, we just look at what we ended up with. We had uh, many more trades. So we had a total of, uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So we had 21 trades, so we were much more aggressive than January. We had, of those 21, we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 winners. Although some of those were half trades, remember, so the losers are obviously going to be much larger from a volume perspective than the the winners. We had uh, break evens. We had one, two, three break evens. And the losing trade, we had one, two, three, four, four losing trades. So overall, I think we'd probably come out okay in February. We'd be positive. But we probably wouldn't be making as much money as we made in January, that's for sure. So look, um, from here, what you can do is, if you want to get hold of the software I use to pinpoint these uh, bearish, and bo and bearish and bullish and bearish engulfing patterns, and the hammer and shooting star candlestick patterns, and run them across any chart that you want. So this is the S and P five minutes but you could run them across any chart you wish please subscribe to the uh, newsletter by chucking your email address in the box below or to the side of the screen and I'll have this sitting there in the mastermind area of the site for you so you can go in and download it for yourself and either run the system uh, on a different pair or use it yourself on the S&P 500 and see if you can make some money so thanks for listening and watching and I will see you on the show.